besides staring with these woodland we'll survival. A buddy of mine are out today and we're looking at a cave. And this is a saltpeter cave in the county that I live in. It's got a lot of history to it. There's some pretty cool little old things in there. Some pits where they used to dig saltpeter and some vats, some pick marks. And it goes all the way back to the 1812 era around there for the 1812 war. And uh, they also mined this area for the Civil War. We're going to give this a shot. The descent into the cave. Yeah. It's got some charcoal marks down in here too, uh, from uh, uh, where they had their torches on the wall. Oh, really? Yep, it's pretty cool. This is what the miners were after. You can see it glistening on the walls here within this dirt. You see a pretty good crust of it here. This is saltpeter. And this is what they were mining. Pretty good deposit in there. This one's still full of saltpeter deposits. You can usually, anytime you see this white sheen like this on the wall, that's the saltpeter leaching out. Now, I don't know if you can tell or not, but uh, right along this wall, is where they were actually digging for some uh, saltpeter. And you can actually see some of the pick marks. Not really showing up very good. Let's see if I can get some here. You can see where they've actually picked it away from the wall. And they dug the dirt and trying to uh, extract as much saltpeter as they can. They actually had to leach the dirt to get the saltpeter out of it. But you can see the concentrations of it here. I was always told if you just make a line in the dirt, come back in a couple of days, that it'll be, uh, if it has saltpeter in the cave, it'll actually crystallize inside that little line. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but that's what I hear. There are some remnants. There's some old charcoal pieces and stuff. It'd be kind of cool to carbon date it and see how far back it goes. This whole area was excavated. Now this is another area they were digging in. You can kind of see where they've been digging around. And uh, here's a good sign. Right here is where they actually, uh, probably a cane torch. And they've actually knocked the ash off the end of a cane torch. You can kind of see the smudge mark there. Still has a little ash on it. Now it could be from the Civil War, it could be from the War of 1812. So uh, you just don't know without doing carbon dating or something on it. Now you can see here where this has been squared off and dug away. You can actually see the pick marks. Now here's some more cave, uh, here's some more marks on the wall. You can see where they've actually kind of used their torch and kind of scraped that out. Now this could be Native American, could be even older than 1812 or uh, even further back, you know. And, uh, could be Civil War. There's a lot of these marks on the wall where they've actually stoved the end of their cane torch to put it out and to uh, rejuvenate it. There's some really good ones right here on the wall. Right here on the wall. Man, there's all kinds of it in here. Oh yeah, so I say watch the walls. Now this is an area that probably had a torch or something right here. You can see where it's carbon stained the, the uh, rock pretty bad. Some more of those marks. You can see where they've, uh, that one's even still got some material attached to it. Without carbon dating, you'd never tell, you know, exactly how old it is. Yeah, 
when I always come to these things, I always imagine, you know, that the, the old guys that uh, came in here and were, here's some good axe marks here in the wall. So I get a little closer where you can see them. You see where they've been digging. Looks like a pretty rough tool they were using. Oh yeah, I always thought about, you know, these guys that were in here digging this stuff and what they were thinking, what was going through their head. Was it purely uh, money motivation that was getting them in here or were they actually working toward, you know, uh, helping the war? You can see where some old cut steps are here. I don't know if you can see it very good on this camera. Now, just in this area, there are probably six to eight saltpeter caves within probably a 10 mile radius. Some more smudge marks from Cain. See some of the marks here where I've been digging. You can see in the floor here. Probably had a torch leaning up against this wall at one time right here. Some more cane marks. They're pretty much everywhere in here. You can see a lot of them up higher on the wall. Uh, that's because they've dug down. You know, the floor was a lot uh, higher then before they started removing material out of here. Now this is really cool right here, if you look. It's kind of small, but it's a little stalactite formation, just milky white. Really cool. Let's see if I can get the... Don't want to touch it or anything, but it's probably a pebble that's been coated in calcium. Okay, you can see these uh, hills are actually what's left of saltpeter vats. Saltpeter vats were big giant V looking things. They would actually dump the dirt, the cave dirt in it, and they would leach out by using water. They would leach the, uh, the dirt out of it and collect the saltpeter as it ran out the bottom. It would be the water, you know, the water would be concentrated with saltpeter, and they'd boil that down and collect the saltpeter out of it. There's a couple of these piles in here. This is one. Unfortunately, the vats are long gone. You can still see kind of where they would have been squared off. Which is kind of sad, you know, to lose, you know, the history. Lose it to vandals and lose it to, uh, just time. Wet caves do not really do really well on artifacts.